at the core, there needs to be creatives need to be mindful that they need to participate in self care and take care of themselves. And, um, it's, it's outside of the job. And sometimes the job kit requires a lot of sitting and things like that and can create some unhappiness, just the physicality of a designer in the, in the lifestyle, you know, you're sitting behind a computer a lot and just kind of being mindful of like exercising and eating well and taking breaks. And so we as creatives need to be extremely mindful to take care of our bodies because you are who you are at 59, Chris, because of how you treated yourself at 30. Hmm. Even if it's your 29th anniversary of your 30th birthday or whatever. Oh, you do watch. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, and it, it could, another thing is just kind of, being mindful and being present, you know, sometimes we think that the way things are now, like, oh, I'm, I have way too many projects going on right now. You think that that's the way it's going to be forever. And we kind of get a little bit overwhelmed about the future. And, you know, if we just kind of live in the present, work on the projects we're working on now, be uh, really mindful about completing the tasks today, and then when two weeks from now happen, it's usually not going to be as bad as it was. And, you know, when there's going to be times where you have a really light schedule and you just kind of need to manage the ebbs and flows and communicate with the leadership. And um, this goes kind of one of the things that a way of recharging is being mindful of your personal growth and figuring out where you've been, where you are and where you want to go and make sure that you're communicating that effectively you shouldn't have to quit your job to get your hands on a, a big project that Khalil's working on. Yeah. You should be able to have a sit down with leadership and say, hey, I love this company. I love the projects I'm working on. But when I think about my, my personal and professional growth trajectory, I want to be eventually working on some bigger projects So when uh, my parents ask me what I do, they probably still won't get it, but I can tell them that um, I had a hand in working on a project for um, Google at CES or something like that. And um, there are projects that people know the name of the company, they have big enough budgets, and um, they're more um, showy, so to speak. And so just being mindful of your personal growth, professional growth, and being a good communicator about that. The idea of creating a routine. I hate being looking at my calendar all the time. And I think most creatives do. They don't. Um, I, I think of people that are retired and they don't know what day it is. Like, I love that idea. Um, but like, I also find that that idea means that I'm not as productive as I probably could be. And creatives that keep routines, I um, feel will be able to navigate re- time to recharge, but also time to be really productive. And sometimes there's a little bit of a ramp up, you know, when we think about creativity as an individual, but then creativity as the work, the process of doing the work. Um, sometimes it's hard to get started on a project. Sometimes it's hard to know when you're done with a project Mm -hmm. and sometimes your schedule and your routine can dictate some of this, but you don't just want it to happen serendipitously or whenever the salesperson says, I need it by two o'clock. You, you want to actually start planning and then you can factor in times for going on a walk or things like that. And so keeping a routine is something that I would strongly suggest to other creatives, it's something that, again, for me, I don't necessarily love doing it, but I find that I'm able to be a good dad. I'm able to be a good professor. I'm also able to be an entrepreneur and um, able to be a maker too. I really do love making and um, I sometimes don't get as much time for it now as I would like, but if I actually keep a routine, I can slot in some time, whether I'm turning wood on a lathe or whatever. 
And <clears throat> another one is connecting with nature. We're geographically located in northern Minnesota. It's absolutely beautiful here, but it's beautiful anywhere if you're looking and um, open for reflection and looking for inspiration. Um, <clears throat> another one is engaging in a supportive community. One of the things that working from home is a challenge is how do you connect the people together and create a supportive community? One of the things that I'm hopeful for the event industry is that a lot of companies have a decentralized workforce. And one of the things that they could do is use the trade show or have an event where they actually bring all their employees together. So they're, um, or they're, C-level executives or their mid-level management or their creative teams. Um, one of the organizations that I worked for used to do a design camp where the designers would go out and do fun stuff. And it's all about being a part of a community of practice. And whether that community of practice is your design team or the project managers or the organization as a whole, it just is really important that you feel connected to that group. And it's one of the ways that you can feel encouragement, inspir inspired, and motivated. And um, so I think that's really important. And then always seeking in inspiration. This is something that I think is really easy for uh, makers, designers, artists, is we're always sponges. And I feel that if we're not going to galleries, museums, reading books, attending theater performances, or just going to shows, it's amazing how many designers in the event industry don't go to events and it's kind of sad. And so how can leadership create an organ, uh, like a mentality where the, des the design team is actually getting inspired partially while during, while they're getting paid. Does that make sense? It's yeah. almost like that's an after hours thing. And um, it's always going to be an after hours thing because when designers aren't at work, they're just continuing to soak up inspiration wherever they go. And um, so it's a lifestyle. And I do think that's one of the wonderful things about the creative lifestyle. And we've talked about this is this idea of really embracing failure. Um, one of the ways that we can prevent burnout is just, be open to failure. You know what I mean? Like at a very young age, I was buying and selling cars and I bought a uh, infinity G 20 and I was so excited. I love that car and I got it out onto the highway and the transmission was out. And I couldn't get out of second gear. So I'm driving 35 miles an hour on the highway, redlining it. And, and I'm crying because I just spent my money on this heap of junk that isn't working and I bought it at an auction. So it's not like I could bring it back to the owner and I had to accept it, move forward, fix the transmission, take the losses and try to make money on the next one. And that's just the way it goes. That's how entrepreneurship works. But if you, if you, if you never accept failure and move forward, you're constantly just lying to yourself. You know what I mean? And uh, we need to have some level of truth. And the, this goes back to being a part of a supportive community. If, you're, if your company has a, some level of failure rate that's acceptable, um, you, can, you can celebrate failures. You know what I mean? And you're like, all right, that one failed. We're going to celebrate. And if you've kind of... Um, can be a part of a supportive group. It's really nice. And then my last one is just kind of practicing gratitude. You know, this is one of the ways that I kind of try to live my life is just being a creative as a journey and you're constantly evolving and however you can stay inspired and resist burnout and be a part of an organization that helps you and supports you. And there's always things that happen within an organization where you can be grateful for. Sometimes people are always focusing on the negative 
and those types of people can be cancers within an organization Mm. and um, just kind of trying to be grateful and trying to thrive is really, really important in, in meaningful work. So that's kind of the satchel's creative recharge. (laughs) Great, great advice. Um, 